Let's consider switching costs in a little bit more detail. I want to just give a couple of examples. Uh, they may seem a little bit uh, crazy or extreme, but they do illustrate the ideas. We could imagine a firm that is selling a product that is extremely addictive. So if a buyer were to consume that product just once, it would be very difficult to resist buying it again. Now, a firm that was selling such a product would also want to make sure that there were high switching costs in terms of finding another seller of the same product. Otherwise, there really wouldn't be uh, such a big gain in selling this addictive product in the first place. Well, a classic example is a heroin dealer who's selling heroin, which is, of course, extremely addictive. And you may have seen uh, uh, in movies or something like that uh, the idea that heroin dealers give away free samples trying to get new customers. Of course, that would only make sense, that would only really pay if there were no other heroin dealers around. Organized crime usually acts to make sure that there is no competition. So uh, organized crime usually operates in a particular territory and kills anybody who tries to get into their territory and compete. Another kind of uh, murderous business is cigarette companies. In the past, uh, at least according to what I've read, uh, cigarette companies have been giving out free samples in certain places. Apparently, uh, in the past, they used to give out uh, cigarette samples to people with psychiatric problems. They made the claim that smoking would help to steady your nerves, supposedly. Of course, it has no such effect, but the idea was that this would get people to start smoking. They also gave, uh, supposedly gave free samples in poor neighborhoods in various places in the United States. Incidentally, giving up free samples of cigarettes is now illegal. Of course, there are other cigarette companies out there, so if you give free samples of your product, of course people might start smoking, but they might switch to other brands. Uh, I presume that the idea was that if people were given free samples of a certain brand, they might develop some brand loyalty, and that would help to discourage them from switching to another brand. So there would be a kind of switching cost, perhaps a, a psychological one. Now, one thing to remember is that customers are not stupid. They're going to be aware that there are switching costs. So hopefully uh, there are lots of people who will turn down a free sample of heroin or a free cigarette because they'll be aware of its addictive properties. So in general though, uh, consumers are going to be aware that there are switching costs and they'll think about that before they buy the product in the first place. Uh, because once they bought it, then they experience those high switching costs and they're essentially going to lock themselves in to buying that product in the future. So the real competition in markets like that happens at the stage where the consumers are deciding which product, if any, to get locked into, which one to start buying. Another topic that is uh, kind of connected in a way to switching costs is the idea of tying. So this is the idea of linking or tying two products together. So the idea is that if you buy one product, there's another one, another good or another service, which has to be used along with that. So they're used together or we would say they're complementary, or the goods are complements. So if one is purchased, you're really 
locked in to bind the other one. The classic example is one that is discussed in the textbook. If you think about laser printers, for example, and the printer cartridges that fit into those printers, each printer has some unique cartridge that fits into it. So once you bought a printer, then you're pretty well stuck uh, buying those printer cartridges if you want to keep using your printer. So if you tie products together like that, the demand for the second product is very price inelastic. In other words, people are not going to respond very much to changes in its price because they've essentially locked themselves in, in this case, to buying and using a particular type of printer. Of course, in the case of printer cartridges, there are still some substitutes. You can uh, buy cartridges that have been refilled, for example. Uh, you don't necessarily have to buy a new one. Well, there are many other examples of tying. Uh, one that occurs to me is the use of particular kinds of film in certain cameras. So some cameras will take just any old uh, kind of film, that is if people are still using film these days, uh, but some cameras require a particular uh, type of film or a film that's held in a particular uh, um, sort of container. Uh, Polaroid film, I think, would be an example of that. Well, let's just quickly summarize the various strategies that we've seen here in dealing with the threat of substitutes. I've talked about the idea of product differentiation, and I distinguish between really two types of product differentiation. One that is static, so that's one like the chocolate bar example, where products are made different from each other, but they're not continually changing over time. That would be the case of dynamic product differentiation. We've reviewed the idea of customer switching costs and perhaps trying to create greater switching costs so that it's more difficult for your customers to switch to other substitutes. Bearing in mind, of course, that they're going to know that you're doing that. And where possible, it might be possible to tie your product with some complementary good and to use that uh, to your advantage.